I've been playing quite a lot of Kingdom Come Deliverance lately. After finishing the game the first time and still wanting more, I decided to hop back in for a completely unarmed run. Even though I already knew what to do in general, I learned a lot along the way to optimize for this unarmed playstyle. So, I decided to compile all of that together here in text and also as a video. There'll be some necessary spoiler talk, so just know that you've been warned. First of all, I implore you not to attempt this on your initial playthrough. While unarmed is technically an option, it's definitely not intended. You'll have way more trouble than it's worth if you don't already know what you're getting into. This playstyle fits very well with the merciful achievement, as you'll never accidentally kill somebody by punching them too hard. I won't go into every detail explaining the achievement, but it's generally pretty obvious. Just let your allies do any necessary killing and you're all good. Combat works, but you'll quickly learn that the game didn't intend on you fighting armed enemies without a weapon. Dodging and good environment usage is crucial. You'll notice when fighting that enemies don't take damage for a while, especially the armored ones. You need to first degrade their armor enough that it can't block any more unarmed damage. After landing enough hits, depending on their armor, you're able to knock out pretty much anyone. Some encounters just take significantly longer before damage will show up. Staying very close to enemies or cornering them against a wall is an ideal strategy for most encounters. Clinches can help chip an opponent down as well. There's plenty of flexibility when it comes to equipment. However, I found a light armor build to be ideal for me. If you fail to dodge an attack from an enemy, you're gonna take a beating, because you can't adequately block. If you prefer taking a couple extra hits before your health drops, then opt for the full plate armor route. In general, I think dodging is much more valuable in an unarmed build, so I recommend sticking to light armor as soon as you unlock the matching perk. Dodging also gives you the benefit of making your subsequent hit easier to land, speeding up some fights. Potions can always help ease along some tough parts, although they're definitely not required. At the very least, I recommend always having a stack of marigold decoctions and savior snaps. If you're having trouble with a fight, Bivage Rage, Artemisia, and Buck's Blood can all help out. Most perks are pretty much common sense. If something says it'll only work with a weapon, you should obviously skip it. Otherwise, I've listed some helpful perks that are definitely worth picking up. Berserk, which is great for turning around fights when you're behind. Water of Life, you use healing potions quite often, making them 50% stronger is pretty helpful. Leg Day, it's free strength experience. If you're really feeling it, you can grind this out on scallops for an early game boost in strength. Strong Thighs, you'll occasionally find yourself in a pickle uh, when you're outnumbered, ambushed, or whatever. This helps you make a quick getaway. Warhorse. Same thing as strong thighs, they pair pretty well together. Stuffing. Makes your gear much quieter. Helps you out in all things stealthy. Takedown. This is a must-have for the merciful route. If you're not going merciful, you can totally skip it, but basically it functions like a stealth kill without having to kill anybody. Slim fit. Similar effect to stuffing. Reduces your noise. They pair well together. A2 Brute. This helps you speed up the large-scale battles, since you'll be doing a lot of punching enemies in the back. Furious. This helps you turn a fight around. Pairs pretty well with Berserk. Chain Strike. Uh, this increases your damage as you attack. Jabs are super fast and let you build this up very quickly. Clinch Master. Lets you win clinches. A clinch is when you grab an enemy after getting too close and then try and hit them away. This plus high strength stat lets you basically win every clinch. Headcracker. It's a very good addition to any unarmed build. Think of it as a chance for a lucky crit that instantly ends the fight. Light Armor. Crucial for those choosing a light armor build. As I mentioned above, I prefer light over heavy armor when unarmed, but this is totally up to you. Taunt. Makes enemies more likely to back down or run away as you dodge. This pairs very well with light armor. If you're not going for a light armor build, it's still useful, but not as much. The most obvious choice for starting stats would be double strike. However, I find speech to actually be the superior pick here. You'll have no issue leveling up strength from combat, quests, or even herbalism. Speech is much harder to actually grind out levels for, as only new dialogue options with NPCs actually give you experience. Speech is also pretty valuable throughout the game for streamlining some quests and interactions. The only real troubling quest early on is when you return to Scalots. 
The bandits are going to pretty much destroy you unless you've farmed up stats beforehand. However, given that there's no good place to really train up easily, since you haven't unlocked Bernard's training yet, here's two alternatives. One, you can completely avoid combat. This is probably the easiest choice. You can just run away from any bandits you see and try to drop combat. Or two, you can corner your enemies. At low stats, uh, you're only going to be able to land maybe 1 in 10 hits on them. However, if they're stuck in a corner already, your damage will land either way. This is the only way you can legitimately fight enemies that have much greater stats than you. Obviously, once you've unlocked Bernard's training yard, go and train to your heart's desire. At low levels, you mostly have to resort to quick jabs to land hits and gain experience, but it's not too much of a big deal. Stealth in general is very useful as well, so don't neglect to train that up through the various methods. The battle at Purvis Lavitz, and other large fights, may seem pretty daunting at first, but they're really quite easy. In general, you'll have at least one ally, like Bernard, Radzig, etc., who can't die. Given enough time, they can take out everybody alone. Obviously, you don't want to wait for a super long time, so you can help them out by punching enemies in the back while they're fighting. If you're strong enough, you can fight the enemy that you just angered. Otherwise, get a few hits in and then run off. Rinse and repeat. One thing to note is that you do not want to land the blow that knocks them out. In some cases, these large battles won't progress until all enemies are dead. Allies won't attack unconscious enemies. Instead, they'll just stand around and look at them. Thus, anyone you knock out will have to get back up before your allies can kill them to progress the battle. To end this sequence, you have to fight Runt one on one. Surprisingly, I didn't find him to be that hard. He doesn't have any headgear, so taking hits in the face will quickly drop his health. Try to wear down his stamina with jabs, dodge any attacks you can, and then chain regular attacks once his stamina is out. Enemies with depleted stamina cannot stop your regular attacks, allowing you to often land three or more hits, which drops off huge chunks of their health bar. If you're worried, bring some potions and down them right as the fight begins. I did notice that knocking him out the first time didn't end the fight. However, after he got up and I knocked him out again, it promptly ended. Not sure exactly why that is, but you definitely do not have to kill him to end the fight. The monastery is your main hurdle here. If you've already finished the game and know what to do, it's not very tough to repeat. Stealth skills in general will allow you to speed things up quite a bit here. I highly recommend going in with at least the ability to pick very hard locks. One lockpick and you can get outside, grab any of your stuff from the chest, and the rest is a cakewalk. After that comes Vranik. One oddly difficult part I found about this run is the sword combat test after you talk to Eric. The arena is extremely small and going outside of it resets the NPC. When playing unarmed, you'll quickly learn how much distance gets covered in an average fight, making this a huge pain of constant resets. The quickest way to progress past this is to simply let the NPC defeat you. It has no bearing on the storyline whatsoever. When you arrive at the actual battle itself, simply follow the same steps you took at Privis Lavitz. If you get singled out, just try to draw the enemies to your allies to handle. You can also run just outside of combat for a little bit, down a health potion, and heal up. Most of the rest of the game will follow a similar format of large-scale battles. There's nothing too different worth mentioning. If you make it all the way through the game, congratulations! While it sounds pretty daunting at first, the game definitely allows for this unarmed playstyle. You'll be pushing the combat system to its limits and experiencing a few oddities along the way. Despite that, you'll quickly learn how to handle most fights. Then again, you could probably do the entire game without as much as throwing a punch, but that might even be easier. Knocking out a fully geared opponent after a long fight can be very satisfying. Thanks for listening to all this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below or shoot me a message. Good luck out there, Henry.